Hey guys, it's Chris. It's another day. Alright, so we are uh, working on the keyboard, I guess. I have this stuff from the 2000. It's called Keypad Fix. It's from uh, Anders Products. I got it on eBay, like $6. It's pure carbon. Contains carbon and non-toxic binder. The best crap. It is literally black liquid carbon. You put it on the Q-tip on your contact pads. The carbon from the rubber on the bottom of the Amiga touches the carbon on the, the circuit board. And we're okay. If that's how it's going to be. So I have myself a screwdriver. And I'm going to remove... I have myself the wrong size screwdriver. So I'm going to magnetize this screwdriver with an old hard drive magnet. So I don't lose any screws. And I have myself a magnetic bucket, which I'll make a spot for the keyboard screws. Let's get them out. Twenty-six keyboard screws. Twenty-six. Now, I want you to carefully slide the pad out. Looking on the inside, UK 1200 keyboard, some significant rust on this side or some funk stuff same on the other side I still I don't know what the heck this is so we're going to set that back here now we have the membrane which oh lord so perfect example I have some keys that are not working naming them my look at this it's like someone took a poop inside of here now, this could just be dust. There's plastic falling off from the keypads, a broken key. So yeah, uh, F10 here is just falling out in my hands. It is totally broken. So that's just, just flipping wonderful. List that is working and getting screwed again. So this is just really gross. Gross, I don't know what what that is. Yuck. Oh god, it's horrid. I always like to get a look at them from the back. Now this is what I'm talking about. So I have a key here that does not work. Right Amiga, which is this one. Now on here there is a rubber pad, of course. This rubber pad makes contact with a carbon pad of the same area right here, right Amiga. Now, this actually looks pretty clean and you can wipe this off. I'm gonna use just some window cleaner here. Maybe. On a paper towel and just nicely, just give it a wipe for cleaning it up. And I'm checking it for any busted traces, melts, and I see some right now. You see this bubble of goop right here there is a bubble and it looks burnt see that burn mark one of these traces which are just flipping impossible to repair on a dual layer plastic keyboard is totally burnt off and you can see it is actually a black mark right there so that's why my keyboard is not functioning properly. Totally split. Now, if, if possible, could I, could I, would I, should I take a set of razor blades here, squish myself out a razor blade, These used to just pop out. There we go. So slide on a nice razor blade here. And try and lift this bubble up. It is totally... Yes, it is exactly as I thought. Look. Totally cut. There's nothing I can do for that. I could try my best to scrape the top layer away. 
but what happens is you bust the traces just as I thought this was already busted there is a bubble across multiple of them and if if I can separate this bubble I can then use like a conductive pen and uh, yeah get it going again but these data lines run back up to the main you know lines here ah, that just pisses me off Jeez. and when I was talking about using this copper I will do an example so we're gonna take a q-tip here and we're gonna stick it in this carbon crap and it's pretty uh, you know it's drying up a little bit but with that on there you just kinda touch it right and you let it dry and that is it this stuff works flipping wonders if you have a keyboard that has weird keys and you can't do anything with them this carbon stuff just makes them like brand flipping new now I do not have a complete working keyboard because of the circuit issues if you did have uh, a keyboard that just needed a refresh of carbon this stuff is absolutely wonderful I've used it for several years and it has never let me down and I've never had to go back and do it again now if you are left-handed like myself start at the right and work your way to the left otherwise you will misplace where you left off or you will give yourself a carbon wrist from rubbing across it so if you're careful it doesn't take much you just have to kind of like dab them and I'll show you it's not the it's not the cleanest of repairs but function works these are all very old this is not brittle and the bottle states to let it dry for a while but it pretty much dries almost instantly now you don't want to rub your hands across it of course and I see some more damage to this and you don't have to be perfect it's not like the queen is coming over for an inspection alright that's that keyboard fix fixed if you wanted to I guess you could even touch the bottom of the rubber pads these look like just total shit explains why my 10 key is broken and I paid a hundred dollars US for this keyboard and that is just totally wrong to rip somebody off that bad saying your keyboard is 100% working and now you can clearly see the break in the keyboard right look at that look at that break you can see it plain as day so that those two keys are my right Amiga key so I will be filing a complaint on eBay about that and I'm gonna take a picture of it for proof a hundred dollars I paid for this it's just it's just totally wrong to rip somebody off that bad I just cannot stand getting ripped off on eBay endlessly I endlessly get ripped off on eBay so to reassemble this you want to put your ribbon carefully through here and just ever so carefully slide it back into place it has two feet that interlock back in and then you can start reinstalling your screws okay now that is done we need to test this all right so it's back at the 1200 the case is not on all the way it's just the click in the top and I don't have the screws in because it's going to be taken apart again yeah so I did I did forget to record all right we put the Amiga back together I tested the keys and what I did was this. I opened TurboTex and I basically typed on every key to see which ones worked and which ones didn't. 
and luckily I saved the document called A1200 Broken Keys. And basically, I'm getting this. So the numbers are working, the tab here works, and the QWERTYs, and then the ASDF, KG, all ZX, CV, B, and M. Fine. Caps lock works. The space bar is broken. So that's why it is all in one word. So we have the space bar broken, the right shift, uh, the bracket, left bracket on the number pad, the asterisk on the number pad, the plus on the number pad, the right amiga, the right off, uh, the right alt, I'm sorry, and the F10 key is entirely broken. F10. So $130 for a broken Amiga 1200 keyboard that was listed is perfectly working. Uh, today I got my 314 uh, ROMs. Thank you. You know who you are. So we're going to remove the faulty keyboard here. I still haven't done any GoTech stuff yet. And these are the ROMs. They are the low and the high. This is the high. This is the low. So there is the 314 ROMs. I'm going to then carefully not hook up the keyboard. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to use the mouse. And I'm actually going to remove my 4 gig card because I want to see the ROM screen. Power on. So there we go. It took a while to load. And uh, at least we're a 314 ROM. Now on the A1200. Cool. So I can use a larger compact flash card. Now I've already done the Transcend 4 gig and since this only has 2 megs of RAM at the moment, turn it off, turn it on, compact flash card is in, hard drive light is hard drive lighting, oh my god this mouse port stinks the dookie. So there we go, uh, I can copy the library over, this is 3.0. So I can actually go into uh, directory works here just to make it boot and uh, go to df0 and then libs and dho libs and copy the icon library and the workbench library right over, let's see. IFF parse is a little bit less locale version library we don't even have so you know well, let's just copy all these I know I'm supposed to use a keyboard and type clone but I can't because my keyboard is poo hit the button turning the Amiga back on it should just boot to workbench now even though it's workbench 3 I'll do a 314 install later there we go we boot and compact flashcard, plugging it in. There she is, compact flashcard. Just a quick upgrade on the ROMs, and I'll put this back together. And so I'm attempting to 3D print this bracket again without having it freaking screw up here like it is. I'm having real bad adhesion problems, so I glued the crap out of the board. We'll see. This is a 17 minute print. In the meantime, 97% and I see only a little bit of bendage on this corner. So, 98%. 27 minutes. And this infill, this, look, this adhesion didn't even stick. Look at this. Yay, didn't stick at all. And this looks like doo-doo again. And it's bent again. I'm just convinced that this model has an issue. Because this was flat. So in a flash of a edit, I tried to clean up my desk a little more. On a GoTech, to program it, you need to solder in a couple pins. I just solder in four on the bottom five filling in this row entirely because you can use these banks and these banks for different features of the GoTech and before you flame you if you only need to I don't care I'm soldering it in and you're not there we go okay. solder heats up very fast so I am going to hey you need to get some solder too 
that might help. What is that gross thing? This is just tip thinner, tip cleaner. You can stick it in there, and it'll bubble and clean your tip for you. Nice thing to have. Now we have a nice clean solder tip. And that is that. I can clean the tip again. So it is ready to use for the next time. And if you're interested in seeing how you flash a GoTech, check out one of my previous videos before when I flashed the GoTech and it shows you how to hook it up and you know transmit, receive, and all that stuff. Okay, successfully completed. Awesome. So we'll unplug that. Our GoTech, whoops, is now programmed to flash floppy 2.1.4. I'm going to leave this out because I'm going to be doing the screen mod for the other one. I will be doing direct wires because the case that I'm going to put this in is like this. So I have to do this part still. So my apologies for it not being 100%. So here's what I'm gonna do with this floppy, flash floppy. This screen is coming out like they all do. These 3D printed pieces that I have been working on are actually the display of the uh, GoTech top mount. All right. So it has a little pin, but if I put the pin on the screen here, it won't be able to fit in here. So I have to solder it in Oh my, this is tight. So it just fits. And there she will sit. Now, and there's a little plastic thing that you can peel off for your screen. I might as well just peel it off because I'm not leaving that on there. All right, so this will sit like this. It's just tough. Let's get this down in here. It's going to be a bear. These will go out. This will sit in here like so. And this will grip into the ribs of the 1200. Now before I do that, I have to put this through here like this. Because I want my wires to have this piece on first, otherwise I solder it in and it does me no good. And it doesn't matter what order I solder them in, because I have to flip them around on the other side. Alright, that's done. Turn the iron off. The idea is to get these flat as they can be. And that way I can be through my thing. And when I put it in my display... it fits with the wires behind it then this can carefully come up here like so and hopefully I have enough slack to get it to close like that and this will click into the 1200 and I'll have a screen so I'm going to need to clip them all off, which is what I shall do. And I'm going to solder directly onto the GoTech, and I'll show you. I'll click it in and show you what I mean. So it, it pressure fits right in here, and you can see where the wires go through. But they're angled; they don't go right through the connector sitting right here. It's just the hard drive stuff. So yeah, do I want it there? Do I want it here? I probably want it on the end as close as possible. So all the way over. And then uh, this will be painted. Okay, so fast forward a little while and the 1200 is in with the other GoTech. The original GoTech is back in its original case and everything is sorted and it's sitting over there with the other spare uh, gray one. So I have everything hooked up. I acquired a new uh, cable from a donor uh, PC and then I just sliced it. So if I put a disc in you will see that it should show up. 
There it goes. Install 3-1, and as you can see down here, I have the ugly uh, letters that are, are three-digit pad. So, it's functional, it works. Turn it all off. Now, I need to sort the wires on this, and for that, you have to go to what the screen is, and these are the power pins on the GoTech, the four where they hook up. This is what I've done. On my screen, I wrote down on a piece of paper what colors I had going to what. And I took the original uh, num numeric display, I just pulled the wires out, and I removed the conjoining plastic piece that goes over the pins. Because I have wires, so what I'm going to do is just wrap mine for testing purposes only. I'm going to place them on the connectors. I'm going to do red and white where I have to do ground and VCC. So I'm going to take my ground here. And we're just going to wrap it to test it. And we're going to turn this on now hopefully. All right, there we go. Can you see that? It is left to right, so I need to know the... It's install 3.1, it's running, it looks fine. Now, if I put this in here like this, this is how it will look. This will click into the... Uh, and it's booting, it's... There's install. Uh, this will click in right here, and I have the direction to run my wires. Cool. So we turn it back off. And now that I know that's functional, I'm going to undo these wires and I will redo them correctly after I run them through this thing. But, like I told you before, remember when, uh, that's a really tight fit, so I need to open this up a little more. Okay. So I just needed to open up just a tad. I wanted it to stick, and it's not quite a hundred percent, but you can get the idea of this how it sits. So it will sit like this. So it's sitting there. Now this will be painted white. The wires are coming through right here, right here, and they kind of just just fit. Now, I'm going to rewire them up, heat shrink them, and get them sorted. And we're just going to pre-cut some pieces. That has a slice in it. So pre-cut four decently sized pieces. So I can make it removable if need be. I can unplug it from the GoTech. If I soldered it in, it wouldn't be removable. I mean, it would be, but I'd have to desolder it in order to uh, remove the lid. And I don't want to do that. And flash floppy is correct. Install 3.1 ADF, and the track is reading. That way I know what disk is in the drive. I don't need this power light because it's in the way when the case is down for the buttons to be depressed. And if I fold it back, there's a chance it could hit the little screw right here. So I'm just going to clip that off. So it boots. It works. With that, we're going to remove the power light. Little LED. I'm going to use my hot air. I'm just heat shrinking the wires over here. And turn this on. Flash floppy 214. You can see it uh, booting here. You can see it says Workbench 314. Now if I are to access the disk, the floppy light accesses and the tracks also are accessing on the GoTech itself. You will see when I go into something that the track, and if it was writing it would have a W. So it doesn't do too much. If I launch something, you can see it slightly reading, and the W is right. It's actually writing something to it. I don't know what it would be writing to the floppy drive, but it was just loading the clock. 
and there's the simple clock program itself. So anyway, with my mess here, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching as always. I hope this helps you uh, make the decision on how to do your own screen mod with this uh, pressure fit. A uh, very complex 3D print. I have not made the decision whether I'm going rear compact flash or not. Based on I have a hard drive mount and it's working, I don't plan to be in here that often. So once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.